Well, good mo uh, good afternoon <laughs> on this cold, icy day on the Sabbath. Blessings, everybody, on the Sabbath day. May the peace of Shalom be upon you. May your families be blessed. May your home be full of His glory and His power. I come with some things that I have been feeling in the spirit. Mighty things. A lot about Israel. We see much going on in this world right now. Anger, trouble, war, fighting, death. And we see the armies of Satan marching over there in the Middle East right now. ISIS. Preparing the way for their king to come when he comes. When he rises up out of the desert sands and takes his stand. But the Lord has been moving on me mightily that this nation has become so wicked, America I'm talking about, has become so wicked that it's going to implode in on itself. Shame, shame, shame. A great country going down. What? in the world can we do to stop it? Ah, it was told to us a long time ago when God spoke to Solomon if my people who are called by my name repent I will hear their prayers and heal their nation. Well, as we see things that keeps going on and on, we're not going to repent. I mean, really, 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 really. I'm not trying to say that just in a negative way. I'm just, look around you. I challenge you to go to a mall or a store somewhere, find you a seat, a bench, and I know Walmart has them right there at the front door, near it. and most malls have benches that you can sit on and rest. Well, go and sit there and watch the people as they come and go. Just watch them. You will see many that try to smile and act happy, but you can see within their eyes they're very sad, broken, and discouraged people. Now, a long time ago, I tried to explain in a video what God showed me, that without Jesus Christ, you are the walking dead. Yeah, I know they have a series on TV called The Walking Dead. Here lately, I've been noticing there's a lot about, you know, zombieism. The zombie nation, X, X uh, nation, which deals with zombies, The Walking Dead. Um, hmm. I mean, it's all about dead people coming back to life. Well, without Jesus Christ... You don't have to die physically and come back dead. You are already dead. Without his nurturing spirit living with inside you, nurturing you mentally, physically, in every other way, you are a walking dead person. Because the one that lives in you is not of God, it's not of Jesus. It is Satan. That means that your insides, inside out, is rotten and decaying. 
with the stench of Satan's animosity against human beings. Because Satan hates humans. I mean, really, he does. He didn't want God to create human beings in the first place. He was quite satisfied being with the top being upon the totem pole, walking with God through the fiery stones of Garden Eden. You know, there's two gardens, one in heaven and one that was here on earth, which has been sealed off. But he didn't want anyone taking his place and hoarding in on him. And he could see in the future that's what we would do. Well, that's what we did because he gave up his place. He didn't stay to, to work with God to promote the image and the plan of God down the road, which had a lot to do with us. That's why we were creating, fulfilling the plan of God. And he, he, Satan didn't want that. I mean, he, honestly, he just didn't want that. So he's hated us ever since. He's been trying to get rid of us ever since. But we just keep multiplying. But those that are born again with the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, running through our veins, renewing our blood, renewing our blood, the life force that flows through us. He renews it and makes it one with Him, makes us one with Him. But there's coming a time very soon, this is what God showed me, that not only will America, but the whole world will implode in on itself. The finances will be gone. The crop areas will turn into deserts. There will be no food. There will be such a lack of food, people starving literally to death and dying on the streets. Children crying and begging mother for food, and she has none to give. And as it grows worse, and people are dying, not having enough people to bury what's there. The water becomes polluted. It will be a very bad, bad time. And then the man of sin will rise out of the desert sands. Will take control of Satan's army and the world. But the one thing he will do, because if you look to Israel, the land is fertile. They're growing crops. They're selling abundantly to all the world right now, feeding the world. But he will look and see what Israel has done over there with that land. He will go, I'll make a peace treaty with Israel. A seven-year peace treaty. That's all I need is a seven-year peace treaty. And then I will manage to destroy all humankind upon the face of the earth. So when he goes over there and he sits down with the president of, the, of Israel, Because he knows that Israel will be more than willing to sign. Because they have. They have even give away land just to have peace. They want to have peace. But he'll go over there and he'll make this peace treaty. And he'll say, let's fill out a seven-year con year contract. You grow the food to fill the world. Feed the world. I will make sure it gets to every nation. Every country, everybody in the world, and nobody else will ever have to die of hunger. And 
In return, I will help build the temple back on Mount Moriah, and I will cause the Muslims to back off and agree to this, being that he's going to be ahead of the Muslim. And of course, Israel's going to go, yes, yes, we'll, we'll do this. We'll sign this treaty. We'll be loyal to you. So I see in the first three and a half years, they will feed the whole world. The whole world. Everybody that lives on this earth will be fed by Israel. For they will grow the vegetables. They will grow the fruit. They will grow the cattle, the sheep, and the goats. That will be slaughtered and sent to everyone across the world. The whole world will be fed by Israel. And God will bless them mightily. Will bless them. But during this seven years, the fallen one, the, the one that has raised up out of the desert sand will look and say, they're getting rich. They're prospering mightily from this. I think it's time for me to do something about it. So he will go in to the city, and as he's coming in with his army, whether he calls them ISIS or what, but when he comes in with his army, many, 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 many will flee from Jerusalem. God has showed me that the 144,000 will lead them back across the desert to Mount Sinai, where they will be upon the Mount of God's glory, protected by Him. But yet there's going to be a small group that will not flee, because just like in Egypt, only a third of, Egypt, of Israel left Egypt with Moses. The rest stayed behind. Well, as that group that leaves is Jerusalem and heads across the desert like their forefathers do, for the protection that they will receive, there'll be that third left behind in Jerusalem. So, as it's growing worse, and the Antichrist turns on those that stay behind, the ones that fled will mask a mighty army. And, and you can find this in Ezekiel. Let me see. The 27th verse. I mean the 27th chapter. How they will stand outside of Jerusalem and fight against those that's in Jerusalem. Well, the tribe of Judah won't be fighting against what's left behind they so much as the fallen one in his army because they will come back they will have some God will either tell them to go back and retake Jerusalem and the temple but they will come and fight against Jerusalem and many other armies will come and fight and there will be such a battle it's beyond imagination. It will be so bad, so many people will have died and will die during this conflict that God will have shortened the time. And at the ending part of that seven years, Jesus will come on the white horse with the army of the host of heaven. He will land on Mount Olive. 
The mountain was split, and when it splits, it will give a pathway for those that are trapped in Jerusalem to escape down a great valley and run. And then the war will be on from the host of heaven with the host of Satan here on earth. Israel and Jerusalem will turn into a bloodbath. It says that the blood will run to the bridle bits of the horses. My Savior and his army will be on a horse. I see in some of Isis guys riding horses, so horses are going to be involved as well as whatever else they use, the tanks and things. But it will be so furious fighting all the way to the valley of Armageddon where the battle will end in defeat of Satan's army and the glorious victory of our King of Kings and Lord of Lords our Messiah Jesus Christ who after he wins the victory will go back to Jerusalem he will walk through that temple and he will cleanse it with his own blood, sprinkling it just like he did in the heavens when he first gave his life for us. Then we will join him, the body, the bride also, will join him over there in Jerusalem. Then the wedding and the wedding feast will happen. And that's when the thousand years will begin. God has plainly told me that that time is now upon us. We as his children Yeshua's body and his bride need to live and walk in his presence for he's inside us. You see, two masters cannot live inside one body. We can live here, but we cannot invite Satan spirit to live inside and also invite Jesus's spirit to live inside it just won't work they're, they're two enemies now you think that we're having problems now the flesh fighting with the spirit oh my word if you got Satan in your in your body with you and you got Jesus in your body with you what a war there would be no, God won't let that happen. God will not permit that to happen. That's the reason why we have to learn to become children of light here on earth. Jesus' light must shine from us daily. We need to stop and start listening to God and His Word and what He's saying to us and what He expects of us. We are foreordained to be here on this earth at this time for His purpose. And it's time for you to learn where your place is in the body of Jesus Christ. So get the word out and start studying. Get your strong dictionary. Get the, get the word out. Start writing it down. Do a deep study on the body of Jesus Christ and His bride you will find we are to become one with Jesus and one with the Father. That's in John. This is the Sabbath day. It's a holy day before Him. And I praise Him. But we've got to learn 
where we are in the body. We, we must learn. Throughout the New Testament, Ephesians and Colossians and everything where Paul talked about the body of Christ, you know, each limb, each lecture, you know. I mean, the hand cannot do what the feet does, and the feet can't do what the hand does. Two separate parts of the body. Two separate designs and commands from the brain part, Jesus Christ. Each has to feel its purpose and place in the body without being jealous and wanting, well, I wanted to be a foot. I, I, I wanted to carry the body. I wanted, no, it's not what you want. It's what he wants. You got to understand this. Some wants to be the hand. Some wants to be this. Somebody wants to be that. You need to seek him and find out what you're supposed to be in the body of Christ and fulfill that portion for the glory of the Father and of the Son. You know what? It's not about us. It really isn't. We're his children. But it's not about us. It's about Him. His designs. His desires. His plans. He started this in the very beginning when He picked up that dust and He molded a human being's body like and which was look like unto him and he breathed the breath of life into it. He is the one that began this story. He began it. We are only to walk through it and fulfill what we're supposed to be fulfilled in this plan that God had set out so long time ago. You know, it's a beautiful story. You know, we go to stores, bookstores and stuff, and we look at the cover and we read all the stuff about the story, and then we decide whether we want to read the story or not. And then we take the book home and we get caught up in the moment of reading the story. It's almost like we're in that story as we're reading the story. Even though we're not, but it's almost like we are because we get so engrossed into the story. That's why we read the book. We are God's story of fulfillment and of glory to Him. He wrote the story. We're only part of the story. And we need to fulfill our part as He foreordained and wanted us to do. I know it's hard for some people to realize that because they think, seem to want to think it's all about them. It's not. It's not about me, nor you. It's about what God planned for us. He planned it to the point that He gave His only begotten Son so that His Son could make a way for us to fulfill that plan that God has set us on, that journey, that story He has set us on, and to be forgiven. You know, this may sound silly to some of you, but I can see children during the new earth age, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ, picking up books and reading about us and what happened from the very beginning to the very end when the thousand year reign begins. They'll have a mighty story. I mean, if you want to find out about Israel, pick up the Torah or the Old Testament, and you read all about them. They were the story of old. 
Do you understand that? They were the story of old, fulfilling the plan of God back then. We are the story of the new chapters that's being written. And we must fulfill God's plan that He has chosen for us. It's not about us people. It's about God's glory and mighty power and righteousness. So for us to inherit the inheritance that God had promised us long time ago, we must feel that story. We must realize that we are children of God, not really children of this earth, but we are His children, fulfilling His story, His purpose, and His plan. So please, on this Sabbath day, pray. Seek Him in a way you've never sought Him before and become still in His presence. Blessings in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Be blessed on this Sabbath day.